Right, let's continue. I hope that you're comfortable with these so we can move through these a little bit faster. On the 5th of March, Tim gave his wife 2,000 Rand from the business account to go shopping. From the business account means that this impacts the bank, so we know that we need to be aware of how this moves the bank, and he's given his wife 2,000 Rand for her to go shopping. So in terms of the bank account, we are decreasing the bank account by 2,000 Rand, because in terms of the business's bank account, it has dropped. I've spoken already about the fact that whatever Tim does in his personal capacity does not necessarily affect the business. So her shopping and whatever she buys for her shopping is not part of the business and has nothing to do with the business. However, the fact that Tim has taken money out of the business for his personal use means that from the business's point of view, his share in the business has dropped because he has taken some of that out. He has taken some of his benefits out of the business. So in terms of that, his equity will then drop because... He has taken his share of the business out, part of his share. This is what we call drawings. The owner of the business is definitely capable and definitely has the right to take money out of the business for his personal capacity. And that's not a problem. That's fine. That's he's allowed to do. But that definitely needs to be expressed as him taking part of his share of the business out. We can't call whatever she's shopping for in her personal capacity a business expense because it's not. It's their personal stuff. So always make sure when you're doing this that you draw a line between the owners in their personal capacity and what happens with the business. The next one, Tim paid wages of 400 Rand to his staff from the bank account. Again, we watch the bank account first because it's easier to deal with. And in terms of our assets, we are reducing the bank account by 400 Rand. Your wages are expenses that you have to pay out on a weekly basis. And therefore, we know that our expenses affect our profit and our profit is going to impact our equity. So he is reducing the equity he is reducing equity by 400 and our equation is back in balance. Tim rendered services to R. Naidu with the agreement that he would be paid at the end of the month. So he is rendering services, it's for 650 Rand and he's only going to be paid at the end of the month. Again, we said start with the bank, it's easier, but here we see there is no impact in the bank account. There is no money in the bank account at the moment because R. Naidu said that he would pay later. So we have revenue, we have income, but we have no bank. We need to record the revenue and we need to record the fact that we should be receiving this money. So in terms of our revenue, we know that it impacts our profit, which impacts our equity. So our equity has increased by 650. We have no money in the bank, so there's no impact in the bank. But we need to reflect that we are going to be receiving money in the future. And this meets the definition of an asset, our trade and other receivables. Go and take a look at the format of the Statement of Financial Position that we took a look at in Study Unit 2, and you'll see that they refer to this as your trade and other receivables. A receivable is money that you are going to be receiving. A receivable is money you'll be receiving in the future. And in this case, we recognize this. In a lot of us, in normal terms, we call this debtors. In your statements of financial position, we call it trade and other receivables. Next one. He refilled the bucky with petrol for 870 Rand, paid with money from the business account. The effect on the bank account, he has taken 870 Rand out of the bank. Your petrol expenses for the bucky is an expense which affects profit and so therefore his owner's share in the business will decrease because it is an expense. He bought a chainsaw for the business and paid from his personal account 5,600. The business has been impacted here. The chainsaw is for the business. The chainsaw is going to be used for the business and he's expecting that he's going to create income from this and therefore your chainsaw is equipment that the business needs. So we increase the assets of the business by 5,600 Rand. The bank account has been affected, but not the business's bank account. He has paid this from his personal account. Remember we said we draw a line between the business and Tim in his personal capacity. He has taken money out of his business or out of his personal bank account and added value to the business. This means that it's basically the same as him investing 5,600 Rand into the account or into the business and then taking the money out. All he's done is he has just missed that one step. So this is going to increase the owner's share in the business. 
whether he invests money in the business or whether he invests value in the terms of assets in the business, it has the same impact. The owner's share in the business has increased. There is no liability. He has not done this as on a loan basis, which says the business must pay him back at some point in time. This is part of a capital. He paid for printing of advertising pamphlets from the business. It came to 430 Rand. Advertising, again, we said is expenses, and this is going to affect your profit, which means that our equity has gone down by 430, and our bank account has gone down by 430 as well. He performed services for two townhouse complexes, was paid one and a half thousand rand. The amount was deposited into the business account. So the bank account is up by one and a half thousand rand and our equity is up by one and a half thousand rand because this is profit, which closes off to equity. Liabilities are not affected. He purchased tools for the business, which came to 2,300. He paid this from the business account. Again, the bank account has decreased by 2,300. He purchased tools for the business, which means he believes that this is going to create future economic benefits in form of sales in the future, which means that although the bank has decreased, the assets have increased. So a bank will go down and your PPE, your property, plant and equipment will go up and nothing else will be impacted. He opened an account with a local hardware store, DIY stuff, and he purchased tools on account of a value of 3,500 or 3,700, sorry. Nothing has happened to the bank account. There is no impact in the bank account here. He bought tools, so he bought more tools, which means that the value of assets have been increased by 3,700 Rand, his PPE. Does this affect his equity? He has purchased these on account. He's created an account for the business, which means his equity is not impacted here and he's going to have to pay DIY stuff 3,700 Rand in the future, so his liabilities have increased. He transferred his personal computer to the business. The value of the computer was 12,800. The computer is going to be used within the business and so that is considered an asset, so the assets have increased by 12,800. And just the same as we said earlier, he purchased something in his personal capacity and gave it to the business, invested into the business, the same thing has happened here. So his share of the business has increased by 12,800. There is no future outflow, there is no liability. R. Naidu paid 650 Rand into the business account in settlement of his account, see transaction 8. Let's go back to transaction 8. Here we had Tim rendered services to R. Naidu with the agreement that he would be paid at the end of the month, 650. At the time, we recorded this as revenue, but remember, there was no bank impact. Now, when Mr. Naidu actually pays us, this does go into my bank account. So my bank has been increased. But I can't record this as revenue. Although he is paying this because we rendered a service for him or because Tim rendered a service for him, that service has already been rendered and we have already recognized the revenue for that. So you can't recognize that again. What has happened though is that we have transferred one asset to another. So we did recognize a trade receivable saying that we would get money in the future and now we actually have the money. So we've increased the money we have and we need to decrease and get rid of that little trade and other receivable that we had that says we were going to receive money. That is now zero. He doesn't owe us anything anymore. Tim paid 300 Rand to DIY stuff in part payment of the amount that he owes them. See transaction 14, he paid from the business account. In transaction 14, he opened an account with the local hardware and he bought tools on account, which he told him he would pay later. He is now paying. So, 300 Rand comes out of the bank account, which means we decrease the assets by 300 Rand. He did raise, we did raise a liability saying that he was going to pay 3,700. He is now paying 300 of that, which means the liabilities decrease by 300 and it has no impact on equity. Last few. The business account earned 54 Rand in interest for March. So the business account is going to increase by 54 Rand. But what does this represent? 
interest is not revenue for him, go take a look at the little infographic on the difference between revenue and other income. This is not revenue for him because his core business, Tim's core business, is not about earning interest. It's about rendering services in the form of garden services and getting money for that. So in terms of that particular business, all his rendering of services is going to be recognized as revenue. This will count as other income. But other income is still going to form part of my profit. So it still increases his profit, which means he still increases his equity, his owner's share of the business by 54 Rand liabilities, zero. He drew 30,000 Rand from the business bank account for salaries. Salaries are expenses. Expenses is going to decrease the equity, 30,000 Rand. And he has decreased the bank account by 30,000 Rand, no impact on liabilities. Last two, he obtained a loan from the bank for 30,000 Rand, which he plans to use for additional equipment for the business. Now be very careful here. He has gotten a loan from the bank, which means he went to the loan and said, please, he went to the bank and said, please can I have money and I will pay for this later. That means that he has created a liability. He now owes the bank. The bank has given him 30,000 Rand for the business and he is going to have to pay them back at some point. So that is going to impact his liabilities. But be careful. He plans to use it for additional equipment. So do we increase assets by 30,000 Rand and say that he now has additional PPE? The answer is no. Be careful about that. We can't recognize something that he plans to do because it hasn't been done yet. So remember our definition of an asset, a resource controlled by the business, by the entity as a result of a past event. This hasn't happened yet. He plans to purchase equipment, but he hasn't done it yet. If this business comes to a halt right now, he doesn't have the equipment. There is no past event and he doesn't control this, which means this is not an asset at this point in time. So what has he done with this 30,000 Rand? Tim has been given 30,000 Rand for the business and at this point he has done nothing with it. It is now going to be sitting in the business account. So in terms of the bank account, he has got 30,000 Rand in the bank account, but please be careful. This is not equipment yet. When he goes and buys the equipment and he actually goes and purchases it, that's a different story. So be careful about the difference between someone saying this is what they have done versus this is what they plan to do. The last one, he paid 5,000 Rand to pay less fleet as an installment on the Bucky from the business account. So right in the beginning, he bought a Bucky for 95,000 Rand. He owed them money and he's now saying, I will pay you and I'm part paying you. So the bank account has decreased by 5,000 Rand because he had to take money out the account to pay for it. And his liabilities have decreased by 5,000 Rand because we need to reflect that we don't owe them that much money anymore. And there's zero impact on the equity. I've moved through these very slowly and I'm all along the way trying to explain why something does or doesn't meet the definition of an asset. And you can see all along the way I'm paying attention to detail. In some cases, there may be just one word that changes the way that you feel about everything. There might be just one word that changes how this is. The difference between saying maybe his business bank account and his personal bank account. So you really have to pay attention to detail here. You really have to read carefully and make sure that you know what it says and you know what it means. And you've got to make sure you understand how all of this impacts. From here, we're going to build on how we would actually record this in the books. But for the meanwhile, please make sure that you're very comfortable with these. Please make sure you're very comfortable with why each of them work the way that they do.